Good day. So uh, today we're going to use a KISS data set to talk about the mechanics of planned comparisons. <clears throat> Again, just philosophically why I'm bothering to do this is that you can carry out this analysis in SAS Jump and other programs, um, but if you don't really know what it's doing, uh, then you are going to be um, less confident that you understand the outcome of these kinds of tests. <clears throat> so let's go through one where we actually do the calculations ourselves and I'm imagining sort of a control group here and this is our same data set that we talked about in the uh, video 23 I believe it was um, where we have a control and we've added fructose to a medium and we've added sucrose to another medium and we put P stem segments in there to grow uh, and we get data like this. So this represents some Y variable that we've measured on the P stem segments. Maybe it's change in length in millimeters, um, whatever you want to make it out to be. Okay, so we can imagine if we look at the structure of this data set, it's very easy to calculate the means for these groups. Y bar for the control is what? One, right? Y bar for the fructose is two. Y bar for the sucrose, which looks more variable, is four. And then uh, when we were talking about orthogonal contrasts, we were going to compare controls with sugars. So we also need uh, the Y bar for sugars which we can easily see is three, right? So when we're making that contrast, control versus sugars, we'll use that mean. And we can see also that there's a grand mean here as well, the uh, mean of means. Now we wouldn't take the mean of control versus sugars because that would be two. We take the mean of all of these. Um, in fact, we could take the grand mean altogether, two plus zero plus one plus three plus two plus six divided by six. Or we can take the mean of these means since we have an equal sample size <clears throat> that works. Sorry, I'm talking fast here, but my Y double bar here, my grand mean is 2.333. Make sure you can come up with that. One plus two plus four divided by three. <clears throat> okay, so we have our various means that we need to uh, use in our calculation of um, denominator and numerator uh, values of mean squares, uh, which are going to, in other words, the variances, which we're going to use to construct our F tests for the different contrasts. So remember what we have. We have two contrasts. Contrast one. Contrast one is control versus sugars. And then contrast two is going to be fructose versus sucrose. Now when I write it this way, what am I really asking? I'm asking if the stem segment growth is stimulated by sugars relative to control or different from control. And then I'm also asking uh, whether fructose differs from sucrose in terms of the growth of P stem segments. Okay, so there are my two questions which I want to ask with two different contrasts. And um, these are planned comparisons, and I've already done the test for orthogonality of these comparisons, which says basically it's legal to do these two and keep alpha at 0.05, and I don't have to adjust alpha because these are independent comparisons. Okay, so we've done that test. Now what we're going to do is we're going to construct our uh, F-test. And just let me write it out first. So our F-test is going to be the mean square um, between control versus sugars divided by the mean square within, just like any of our other F tests that we've done. Okay, so how do we construct these? So let's start over. Pause a second, let you make sure you get all this down. All right, so let's take our denominator. Um, you have that down on your paper now so you can see everything that's been written there. So let's calculate our denominator first. Remember what the denominator is? The within group sums of squares divided by the within group's degrees of freedom. So the within group sums of squares we can write as a double summation 
as the groups go from one to a different groups that we have, um, and we sum across the observations within those groups, one to n, uh, of y i j minus y bar for group i quantity squared. All right, so um, our denominator, our best estimate of the within groups uh, sums of squares is going to be across all those groups. And by the way, our, um, well, let's go ahead and calculate that. Um, so we have group one with a mean of one, and the first observation is two. So we have two minus one quantity squared. And the next observation is zero, zero minus one quantity squared. Then we increment to group two, and we have um, group two's mean is two, so we have one minus two quantity squared, and then we have three minus two quantity squared. This, uh, these are the observations, remember two, zero, one, three. And then we have um, two minus four quantity squared and six minus four quantity squared. Okay, so we're subtracting each observation, uh, each mean from each observation within each group, summing across all the groups. So we have these two, first group, these two, second group, these two, third group, and we're good to go. So we just calculate that out and we get 12. All right, but that is not our mean square. We need to calculate our mean square within by dividing the sums of squares within by our degrees of freedom. All right, and so what is our degrees of freedom here? The degrees of freedom, you recall from the one-way ANOVA, is just A times N minus one. It's the number of groups times the number of observations in each group, which is two in this case, um, minus one. Okay, so we have that equals three. So our mean square within, and this is going to be useful for all of our contrasts that we're going to make, is 12 divided by 3, i.e. 4. Nice simple number. Great. All right. It's not, unfortunately, going to be quite so nice to get our um, numerator mean square, but You've got that down now. Remember that that's our denominator mean square that we're going to use. Okay, so our con we're still working on contrast one here. Just remember that. Okay, so with contrast one, we're interested in the sum of the squares of control versus sugars. Mm, there we go. And, um, and so it's the summation of n sub i times, because remember we have to inflate it back by uh, n, uh, y bar i minus y double bar quantity squared. Okay, so at the summation of n i, and we're going to go to group one. Um, group one is uh, the mean of the controls is going to be um, uh, sugars. Oh, by the way, I can uh, actually, mm, let me just um, start over here. Mm -hmm. um, let's just put in the numbers. Um, so we have two is our N, right, in each of the groups. One minus 2.333 quantity squared plus, and this is where it's a little bit weird, because in our second group, we actually have an N of four, right? We have two sugar groups, plus fructose, plus sucrose, and in that group is an N of four. We have a mean of three for the sugars minus the grand mean of 2.333 um, squared. And if we do the multiplication, that comes out to be 5.333. Uh, check me on that. Let's add another three. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, five and a third. All right, so what about the degrees of freedom? Mean square of control versus sugars is going to be the sums of squares of the control versus sugars, all divided by the degrees of freedom. So we need the degrees of freedom, 
and of course it's going to be a minus one, the number of groups we have. Well, we have two groups here. We have control and we have sugars. So remember it's the groups we're comparing, um, not the total number of groups, which is three, but we have two groups that we're comparing, minus one or one. Uh, okay, so we have 5.3333 however many you want, divided by one. And that's our mean square. Okay, so we are now ready to construct our F. So remember, F is the mean square for control versus sugars divided by the mean square within. So 5.3333 if we want to keep writing, we can. Uh, divide it by four. All right, so there we go. Uh, and that equals 1.3333. All right, now as you can probably guess, um, that's not going to be statistically significant. By the way, it's important when we look this up in an F table that we have the right number of degrees of freedom. So our numerator degrees of freedom is one, right? A minus 1 and our denominator degrees of freedom is 3 so this is the numerator degrees of freedom and our denominator degrees of freedom and we want to look up the critical value for alpha of whatever we want our alpha to be typically you know 0.05 um, and we'll look up our critical value of F associated with that and compare it to our value of 1.333 and, and if you know enough about the F table you can probably see already that one is not going to be statistically significant uh, but we'll get to that that's where we'll use jump to actually do that all right how about contrast 2 so contrast 2 um, we'll have fructose versus sucrose okay all right so let's do that one. Um, first of all, the MS for the denominator is the same, equals um, four. Now, you might think, wait, didn't we use um, the control to calculate that MS within? Yeah, we did. But remember what is the assumption of ANOVA that, the, that there's a homogeneity of variances and that applies to these tests as well. So we're assuming that we get a better estimate by, of the within group variance by including all of them than by recalculating it just for the sugars. Um, by the way, we would get a different answer, remember, because the variance is slightly different for the uh, fructose and sucrose. But we're going to go with our best estimate of the within group variance, the denominator variance, of 4. All right, so now what we need to do is just calculate the sums of squares for the numerator of our fructose versus sucrose comparison. So same formula, the sum of n sub i times y bar i minus y double bar. Um, now, the tricky thing here is what you're comparing it to. Because it's fructose, fructose versus sucrose, the relevant comparison is not to the grand mean, but to the mean of sugars. All right, so that's going to deviate from that. This is going to deviate from that, but is that deviation significant? That's our question here, really. So we need to actually change our y double bar here. It's the deviation of that of each of the group means from the sugar uh, mean. So that's the one thing that's a little tricky about this, um, and you need to realize that that's what you're, you're looking at. You're asking, is there a difference between, both of them are sugars. So is there a deviation for sugars significant from the mean for sugars? And that's the relevant comparison. So when we do our summation, it's two times two, remember this is the group mean uh, for fructose, two minus three quantity squared plus two, times four minus three quantity squared. Now n sub i is the same for both of these. We had two observations of fructose, two of sucrose, right? So it makes sense that it is in fact uh, the same n this time. 
un unlike last time where we had four values going into the sugar uh, column. Okay, so we now we have uh, two times minus one quantity squared, two times one quantity squared, and so our um, sums of squares for the numerator is four. And um, we need to know our degrees of freedom, right? So we're going to calculate the mean square. So what do you think our degrees of freedom is? It's the number of groups minus one, right? So we have two groups minus one equals one. So we have four divided by one is our mean square of fructose versus sucrose for that comparison uh, equals four. All right, so now you see how we're going to construct our F test. Here's the denominator, here's the numerator. Our F for fructose versus sucrose equals the mean square numerator divided by the mean square denominator equals 1. Woohoo! Nice simple values. And uh, now we have two separate F tests for. Um, what was sort of a one-way design. We have three treatments here. Control, fructose, and sucrose. Now it might seem like we're going through a lot of calculations here and there's a reason I'm doing it um, because you're going to find orthogonal contrasts are a beautiful way to get introduced to two-way analysis of variance later. All right. Now, um, We've done these two contrasts, we've got our two F's, we could look up these in F tables and we could see whether we have a significant effect of sugars. We could see if we have a difference between fructose and sucrose, we could be done with it. But I wanna illustrate one more thing with this and that is to compare these results to a one-way, a regular one-way ANOVA. And I think you'll find that illustrative um, just in terms of understanding this breakdown here. Okay, so let's just do our one-way ANOVA with this beautiful, simple data set. The sums of squares among groups is going to be n times the sum of y sub i bar minus y double bar quantity squared, right? And so let's multiply it out. So we have 2 times 1 minus 2.333 um, quantity squared plus... 2 minus 2.333. So I'm subtracting the group means minus the grand mean, 4 minus 2.333, etc. Close brackets. And we have uh, a total of 9.333. We want to round off 4. Okay. Now, um, do you notice anything? about this number? Huh. Yeah. Um, you, if you look back at what you wrote down before, the sums of squares for control versus sugars plus the sums of squares for fructose versus sucrose equals the sums of squares among groups. They're beautifully additive. That means we have done a complete set of orthogonal contrasts. Sorry if this sun is starting to shine on you there. It's coming in my window. Turn it a little bit. All right, great. Um, all right, so how do we uh, actually present these data when we want to present orthogonal contrasts in a formal kind of way. In other words, like a complete ANOVA table, what would be a complete orthogonal contrast table? And, and if you do these, there are times where you'll want to show this breakdown. So it's kind of nice. All right, so let's do that. Let's uh, look at the orthogonal contrast presentation of results. So we have our source of variation. And, you know, typical headings here, degrees of freedom, sums of squares, mean square, uh, F, and P, or probability of a greater F. All right, so typical headings for an ANOVA table. Um, now we have treatments 
And we have two degrees of freedom, right? Because there A equals three, so A minus one, two degrees of freedom. And we have 9.333 um, mean square is S sums of square divided by degrees of freedom, so 4.6667. And uh, we'll hold off on the F for just a second. Now, the way we typically present the um, orthogonal contrast is parenthetically under treatments. So we would do control versus sugars. And that has one degree of freedom associated with that, right? Because there are two groups, A minus one. And we have 5.3333. And we have um, a mean square of 1.33. No, sorry, 5.3333. And um, hold off on the F for a second. Um, but we put all of that in parentheses because this is all sort of a subheading to treatments. And then we have fructose versus sucrose. You could even write it out. Oops, I don't want to close paren there. Let me erase that. Fructose versus sucrose. All right, and then we have one degree of freedom associated with that. We have a um, sums of squares of four. Boy, am I, am I shining in the sun here today? Ooh, sorry. Um, all right, so we have um, four the sums of squares and then Four is um, the mean square. We put again close paren around that, and then the error down here. Um, the error has in this case what a times n minus one, three degrees of freedom, right? And we had a total sums of squares of twelve point zero zero. Um, or sorry, uh, error error sums of squares twelve point zero 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 a mean square of 4.000, and we're going to test each of these over the within, right? So 4.6667 over 4.0 is 1.6667, and then we have 5.333 divided by 4 is 1.3333, and then we have 4 divided by 4, which is 1, for our f, and then our p-values, okay, we're going to need to figure those out. And this is where we need a, a program. Now we can look it up in a table and we can get ranges. And we, we're going to see that these are not significant, as you might guess. Um, but this is where we're going to need a stats program like SAS Jump to actually look up these values and get exact p-values associated with those three things. But in the, it's kind of neat how um, these two components add up to the total. Um, so it's kind of a beautiful thing about sums of squares is that they are additive. In fact, we can add these up. If you look, jump and other programs will give a, uh, a total degrees of freedom, you know, a total column down here. And we usually don't put that in ANOVA tables, um, but we would have a 21.3333. Um, okay. Very good. So uh, here we are with our result, and we're going to get our p-value, and we're going to be able to evaluate two questions within our one-way ANOVA here by using planned comparisons, and we will keep alpha at 0.05 um, for each of those comparisons because they are orthogonal comparisons to each other, orthogonal kind of like this hand on the lower left there. All right. Very good. That is uh, all I want to cover about this, but we are going to use orthogonal contrasts by way of introducing you to two-way designs next time. Talk to you then.